just need the bread. The bread is coming. In 2008, 21-year-old Anna and her husband Rafael aren't ready to start a family. We really wanted to wait. We were really careful using condoms. My husband Rafael, we've been married for three years. I envisioned having maybe three kids when I was 25. Not bad. Anna's menstrual cycle has always been on time. That March, she gets her period as usual. My menstrual cycle was still normal. I've always had regular periods. No, Ma, I'm not pregnant. My mother, she's like, you look like you gained maybe five pounds. So she thought, oh, you know, are you pregnant? To calm her nerves, I took a pregnancy test to see if I was pregnant or not. Part of me was kind of hoping that I was pregnant. And it came out negative. I always yo-yoed my weight, so it wasn't anything new. I was eating out a lot, so I just thought, oh, it's all the junk food I'm eating. Those days is when I got sick, vomiting, nauseous, it was bad. My husband and I were going out to eat to different places, just trying new things, so I just assumed that was what it was. We have to stop going out to eat so much. This is bedroom, yeah, bedroom, bedroom, master bed. In September, Anna and Raphael moved to a new city. Oh, I found your candle, honey. I gained a f maybe five pounds, and that's when I took the pregnancy test. I gained maybe another three or four pounds when I moved out here, but the move was really hard on me. I was really homesick. I was eating a lot, and my stomach started getting more like a gut. She was actually pretty angry at herself for that. Anna and I are related through marriage. My husband is her husband, Ralphie's brother. We've known them for five years. Yeah, I know. It's a big adjustment, but I didn't see anything different. She looked a little healthier, but nothing other than that. Although she thinks she's having her period every month, she also becomes strangely moody. She would just start crying out of nowhere, and I would ask her, what's wrong? I would just blow up. I just assumed it was the move. I'm sorry. A month later, she develops a strange symptom, discharge from her nipples. I noticed a, a clear liquid was kind of coming out of my breast. Yeah, I'm just not feeling that good. Then, on December 20th, both Raphael and Anna get sick after a party. We had eaten the same thing. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> my husband, he was sick as well. He was vomiting. For the next three days, Anna continues to suffer from what she thinks is food poisoning. My symptoms went away and hers didn't. Do you want to get you something? You want some crackers or some soup? On Tuesday, December 23rd, she is so sick she can barely move. She was curled up and praying for the pain to go away. I had really, really bad cramps. I was constantly going to the restroom, vomiting. She tries to sleep but the cramps start coming in cycles. All throughout the night, I was just in constant pain. I was looking at the clock, and I noticed that the pains were coming maybe every 10 minutes, and I was like, something's not right. I went to the restroom, and a bunch of water just came out. Raphael! I woke my husband up, and I said, I need to go to the emergency room. That's when I ended up calling the ambulance. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I, I, was, I thought maybe it was a tumor. Paramedics were thinking, I don't need to ride in the ambulance. Hello? I would go in my car later and meet her in the hospital. At 8 AM, Anna arrives at the ER with agonizing cramps. The pains kept increasing. I felt that something was pushing out of my body. I was screaming for somebody to come give me some medicine. The doctor arrives to determine the cause of her extreme pain. First, the doctor examined my stomach. He touched my outside stomach and had a weird look on his face. A vaginal exam reveals the shocking news. He checked me down there, and I was already fully dilated. I'm not pregnant. Yes, you are. I'm not pregnant. What Anna thought was food poisoning was really the advanced stages of labor, when she never even realized she was pregnant. OK, sweetheart, just relax. I had really bad cramps. I thought maybe I'm having a miscarriage. As soon as I arrived to the hospital, they told me that she wasn't there, that she was in labor and delivery. There were so many things going on in my mind, like, she had no prenatal care. We were just thinking the worst. Yeah. Check on the room 218. OK. OK, the baby is crying. That means you're fully dilated. I just want you to breathe for me, OK? I was like, are you sure I'm having a baby? And she's like, yes, ma'am, the baby's the crowning. You're in labor. She connected me to the machine. 
and I could hear the baby's heartbeat, and it was then that it sunk in. I was like, wow, I am in labor. <laughs> what do I have to do? I just want you to push for me, okay? <laughs> I was fully dilated, so I couldn't receive any medication whatsoever. On scale one to ten, it was a ten plus. I arrived to the labor and delivery room, and and to my surprise, I see my wife with legs spread open, right there, ready to give birth. His face was just like white as a ghost. He's like, "What's, what's going on? <laughs> what happened to me?" He was about to pass out. Okay. Give me one more big, big push for me, okay? An hour and a half after finding out she's pregnant, <laughs> Anna vaginally delivers a small baby boy. Do you want to cut the cord? The doctor cut the umbilical cord. My husband was in too much shock to cut it. When I heard a baby crying, that's when I started tearing up. Before Anna and Raphael have a chance to hold the infant, the baby is rushed away. Wait, where's my baby going? What's wrong with the baby? There's just been a few complications, okay? She's gonna take the I baby and I want to see my baby. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to hold my son. They took him since he had no prenatal care. We were just scared. But I will be back as soon as I know Are you gonna okay? know quickly? It's my fault. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't know I was... No. Although they determine Anna has been pregnant for 41 weeks, their baby boy weighs only 5 pounds, 15 ounces. Right after my son was born, he was diagnosed with meconium aspiration syndrome. It turned out that my son was a week overdue. The stress caused him to have a bowel movement while he was still inside me. So when he came out, the first breath he took, he inhaled the meconium. That could lead to problems with breathing, that can lead to pneumonia and long-term lung damage. I just went from not even knowing I was having a baby to having a baby, and now you're telling me that he's sick? The doctor explains their baby will now need a dangerous emergency surgery. There's a very big chance that he won't survive. The terrified parents consent to the surgery, and the baby is transferred to a hospital with a neonatal intensive care unit. The doctors performed surgery on him uh, Christmas night. I was afraid of what was going to happen to the baby, like whether he was going to make it or not. I remember getting on my knees and praying to God, please just let him live. After a harrowing night of waiting, Anna and Raphael hear the news. When we found out that our son's surgery was a success, we felt relieved, but the doctors told us that the hard part was just beginning. Their son may have survived the surgery, but is still fighting for his life. Babies that undergo severe aspiration often require mechanical ventilation. In severe cases, it is dangerous because it can cause brain damage, pneumonia, and lung damage as well. Seeing my son like that was devastating. It was bad. My husband and I were in tears every day. Then, some hope. After five weeks hooked up to a heart-lung bypass machine, the baby finally begins to breathe on his own. I was on a natural high. <laughs> felt really good. You can't prevent meconium aspiration syndrome. However, typically an overdue fetus is specifically monitored twice weekly to make sure that the baby isn't stressed out. So theoretically, she could have prevented this if she had gotten good prenatal care. After six long weeks, Anna and Raphael finally bring the baby home. We were finally gonna start a life together, just us, and no hospitals, no doctors, no machine keeping him alive, just us, family. My son's name is Ezequiel. We gave him a middle name Jesus because it was uh, Christmas Eve and he was a miracle baby. How is it possible for Anna to have experienced so many unusual symptoms and not know she was pregnant? I do ask myself how I missed the signs. She didn't even look pregnant. She didn't have the stomach. There was a lot of symptoms there that we just didn't put together. She most likely got pregnant in March of 2008. I think the condom must have broke when I was ovulating. If condoms are used consistently, they should have a greater than 90% efficacy. It's important to store condoms correctly. They should be stored in a cool, dry place. They shouldn't be left in someone's back pocket or glove compartment for long periods of time. Anna didn't notice any change in her menstrual period. The doctor said what I was getting was not my period. It was just spotting. In June, Anna even took a pregnancy test. It was negative. 
Some women might have a very low HCG or pregnancy hormone level. It is possible for a line or a sign on a pregnancy test to become so faint that the patient might misinterpret the reading. She also had mood swings, but chalked it up to moving to a new city. You're sarcastic. I'm not being sarcastic. She did vomit several times, but the most unusual symptom Anna experienced was a colostrum leaking from her breasts. I'm the type of person that if it's not hurting me, I'm fine. Colostrum is a form of milk that's secreted from the breast. It's usually secreted up to a week before delivery or within the first day after delivery. Anna has advice for all the women watching. This is a warning. Don't be in denial. Saying, no, that can't happen to me. It can. After a traumatic start, six-month-old Ezekiel is developmentally back on track. Surviving this was a miracle and a blessing. My son, he's perfectly healthy. Now with him here, my life is complete. If our son can do this, there's nothing that we can't do. I'm gonna attack you. Oh, 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 run, oh. run. Working parents Jennifer and Brad are too busy keeping up with their four-year-old son, Brayden, to consider adding to the family. I didn't plan to have any more kids. I just had my little boy. I was happy with him. Give me here. There you go. In fact, Jennifer's life is so hectic, she often forgets to take her birth control pill and doesn't use a backup method of protection. I'd miss a day here, miss a day there, and try to double up one day. I never miss my cycle in my whole life. It's important when taking a birth control pill to take it at the same time each day and not to miss a pill. If you miss a pill, it would be important to use a backup method like a condom. Oh, you're good at that! Yeah, Stop making that. excuses. Get in the chair, Dad. Over the summer of 2008, Jennifer doesn't observe anything unusual about her body. I didn't notice any weight gain, but like I always fluctuate between like 10 pounds, you know, up a few or down a few. Well, Jennifer lives with us. I see her daily and I never saw a change in her. Baby, I only got one soda. Oh, that's fine. All right. All right. That winter, she begins having digestive issues. What I felt was what we call in the South is bubble guts. What I attributed that to was carbonation was causing bubbles. Mm. You all right, honey? On March 31st, my cycle was about a week late, and I started feeling like these bad cramps. The situation worsens later that night. Kind of like the time of the month cramps times 10. She hopes a hot bath will help her excruciating pain. On a scale from 1 to 10, <sighs> it was pushing probably 20. <sighs> Since Brad works a night shift, Jennifer leaves their son with her dad and drives herself to the hospital. <sighs> I wasn't going to call 911 because I'd rather do it myself. She told me that she wasn't feeling well. I told her it's not safe, but she's hard-headed and she's hard-wheeled. I'm going to take myself to the hospital right now. <sighs> Jennifer manages to drive herself to meet Brad at the ER. Can we get some help here? But by the time she arrives, her pain is unbearable. I've never felt nothing like this in my life. And on a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rate the pain? And I'm like, it's a 30, it's a 50, do something. I'm in a lot of pain. Within minutes, a urine test reveals a shocking diagnosis. Finally, the doctor comes in. He's like, did you know you were pregnant? No. Jennifer is stunned by the diagnosis. She had no idea she was pregnant, and no one seems to be able to determine how far along she is. They told me I was 32 weeks pregnant. Then 30 minutes after that, I'm 36 weeks pregnant. I told them that's not right. We're not sure how far along you are, but uh, we got to do a few more tests. An ultrasound brings an astounding revelation. The doctor comes in and he's like, did you know you're 32 weeks pregnant? It's April Fool's Day. This is a joke, right? No. But it's eight months. It's eight months. They told me I was 32 weeks pregnant, and I thought I was losing the baby from being in that much pain. Minutes later, Jennifer gets a surprising update about her pregnancy. 
the doctor came in and said, oh, you're 36 weeks pregnant. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I just went four weeks that fast? <laughs> they said I was eight centimeters and already crowning. I was totally shocked. My heart was like racing. Everything was like spinning. The room was real fuzzy. Went into a panic attack. I didn't really black out there. I definitely thought that something could be wrong with the baby. And I was thinking the whole time that I hadn't had no prenatal care. I couldn't have an epidural, and they wouldn't give me any pain medicine because they said I was so far along that it might affect the baby. The contractions right before were almost enough to make you want to jump out of a window. It was getting kind of loud, and I get kind of scared with loud stuff, and I wanted an epidural from the waist up. Give me a big push. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Push. With just one large push, Jennifer vaginally delivers a baby girl. And they cut the cord, bundled her up, and took her out of there. And I was thinking the whole time that I hadn't had no prenatal care. I knew something was wrong. Where's my baby going? Is she all right? Jennifer's worst fears are realized when the nurse tells her that the baby is in respiratory distress. Respiratory distress syndrome is a condition in which the baby has difficulty breathing at birth. If the breathing cannot be stabilized, the worst case scenario is that the baby needs to be intubated and placed on a mechanical ventilator. I got really scared. My worst fear was that she wasn't going to make it. Jennifer's fears are short-lived. Soon after delivery, the infant's breathing stabilizes on its own. Beautiful. They said by the time she got to the nursery that she was fine. Brad and Jennifer finally get to hold the five pound, six ounce baby girl. They name Brianna. They finally decided that she was 36 weeks along by the measurements of her head and her length and her weight. Everything was great after I finally got to hold her. Wow, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Say hi to your mom, see your little baby, hello. <laughs> After three days of precautionary antibiotics, Brianna goes home with a clean bill of health. So how can a woman who has previously given birth go for 36 weeks not knowing she was pregnant? I had no clue. With Brayden, I felt him kicking all the time. I had heartburn all the time. She never just got real tired, just throwing up in the morning or anything, she, none of that. She never gained, like, hardly any weight. I never saw a change in her. I was dumbfounded. Jennifer believes Brianna was conceived in July of 2008. I was on the birth control pill, but I would miss it one day and try to double up the next day, and I don't think it works that way. If you miss your birth control pill and you double up on pills, it is advisable to use condoms as a backup method. Looking back, Jennifer did have some symptoms of pregnancy. What I thought was bubble guts was really her moving around. It is common for some women to mistake fetal movement for indigestion. Let's go get that room fixed up. Come on, let's go inside. You ready, spaghetti? Come on, buddy. <laughs> At three months old, Brianna is the picture of health but Jennifer still worries about the future. Because I had no prenatal care, I was scared that she was gonna have some developmental issues, and it might be because I didn't know I was pregnant. I just hope that she never has to go through anything because of that. There's no better feeling than being a grandfather. She's always smiling. She has her fit, so she takes after her mama.